In this video, let's talk about Talga's new announcement in fast tracking their sample production facility with their silicon anode product and a potential hidden gem that I found in their most recent annual report. Also, Benchmark Minerals, a price reporting agency that focuses specifically on battery materials, is forecasting that there is an increasing risk of not having enough raw materials to meet the synthetic graphite demand in the near future. So I'll talk about the implication of that and I'll wrap up the video with a portfolio update. Before I get started, everything in this video is just my opinion. So don't use this video as financial advice. Like what Elon said, we're always to some degree wrong. My aspiration is just to be less wrong over time. That's why it's important that you do your own due diligence, challenge my thinking in the comment section below, and always gently smash that like button right there for the YouTube algorithm. For transparency's sake, I am invested in Talga, so bear in mind that as you finish watching this video. So without further ado, let's go. Before we talk about the recent announcement from Talga, it's important we understand why silicon graphite anode is key to the next phase of growth for electric vehicles. Firstly, according to an interview between Dr. Shirley Meng and also Jordan from The Limiting Factor, Dr. Meng have indicated that 20 to 30% silicon anode is the most likely next step in battery developments. Why? because it provides massive improvements in energy density and be available very, very soon. With that improvement, you can expect to drive your electric vehicle for longer durations and also further without having to charge. And in the competitive car manufacturing landscape, most companies are scrambling to catch up to Tesla. So you can imagine how hungry each of them are just to get their hands on any forms of competitive advantage. But that's not enough. These manufacturers want these materials to be really cheap and with high enough volume to meet the incoming electric vehicle demand. Here's what Talga CEO Mark Thompson has to say about that. The bang for the buck you get for silicon is the early part of the curve, right? So you, the first, the biggest kick you get is in that first 20 or 30%. You can imagine that our, we can choose what it is. And you could imagine that we would like a number, say somewhere in the region of 20 to 30% silicon. And now you've got an anode that gives you the bulk of the bang for your buck. But now you've got to make it cheap. And those car makers want it cheap. They want it at the same price as like synthetic graphite anode is today. So we make something that is capable of getting down to those prices. Now you want to ride the most profitable margins on the way down there. But what you should realize is we are making the, the thing that ends up commercial and is a commercial price and, and, and gives most of the bang for buck. It won't be perfect. It's not the 100% stuff. It's something that is doable now, you know, can be in qualification processes now and be available really soon and be good margins for us, but very useful price for the, for the car companies, for example. So there's no point making something that you can only make, you know, five tons a day when the market needs, you know, a hundred tons a day or a thousand tons a day and your price level based on your energy and your inputs and stuff makes the price double what they want to pay. So as you can see, the price matters just as much as the volume. There's no point being able to produce small amounts at the best quality and vice versa, being able to produce a lot, but not at the price point that the car manufacturers or the battery manufacturers want. The fact that overwhelming demand is pushing Tauga to 10X their sample production capacity. It tells me that either more manufacturers are trying to lock in silicon anode supply really early or the manufacturers want to test whether Tauga can sustain the quality of the product at a higher volume or a bit of both. I've put a few car manufacturers and battery manufacturers on screen for you to dream about. But regardless of who those companies under confidentiality are testing those materials, Tauga is placed very well in the EU to supply battery materials in the future. In my previous Tauga video, I documented that one of their key risks is financing. Now for anyone who's interested in watching that video, I left the link in the description box below. And of course, over the 2020 financial year, Tauga have made multiple moves to make sure they continuously have access to capital. Here's a quick summary. On October 2019, Macquarie Capital is appointed as Tauga's advisor with a focus on finding strategic partners and investors to finance the Vatangi Anno project and exploring the merits of additional listing on London Stock Exchange. And then a month later, 
Tauga raised $3.25 million led by Canaccord Genuity from its existing shareholders and new institutional investors. Then on March 2020, Mitsui and Tauga entered into a non-binding memorandum of understanding, saying that the intention from the Mitsui side is to negotiate and enter into a joint venture to develop the Vitengi Anno project together. Then in August 2020, a 10 million institutional placement was carried out with Canaccord Genuity as the sole lead manager to the placement. That money is mainly used towards Tauno C sample production capacity, feasibility study to support project finance options and general working capital. And then finally, in their most recent 2020 annual report, I found this. Agreements signed with Mitsui and company and Macquarie Capital to progress for Tangi Anno project financing. That could be referring to the appointment of Macquarie as advisors and the memorandum of understanding with Mitsui, or is there an official agreement between Tauga and Mitsui with Macquarie providing financing in place? I could be reading it too much into it here and too far into the speculation territory, but I will get this confirmed by their investor relations. At the same time, Macquarie Capital is known for infrastructure financing and asset management. They don't do due diligence like General Motors and they are known in the industry to price risk appropriately more often than not. After all, it's really hard for them to be the largest infrastructure asset manager in the world with a 48 billion market capitalization if they continuously misprice risk. On top of that, Macquarie tends to put money where their mouth is, investing their own money in projects alongside their clients, while other banks would not. So what do you think? Is there more to it or am I too far into the speculation territory? While we're on their annual report, Mark Thompson, founder CEO of Tauga, purchased an additional 68,000 shares along with other executives in the team. To me, that shows their confidence in the longevity of the company, increasing their own skin in the game. And their confidence makes up for the lack of income currently. The tailwind of massive demands for battery materials reinforced by the announcement to fast track silicon anode sample production capacity can only increase their access to capital in the future. On a separate note, the federal budget 2020 introduced some additional R&D incentives where refunds for undertaking R&D investments are no longer capped. So it'll be sensible to expect some of that R&D to come back to Australia to make the most of that incentive. While we're talking about battery materials, it's worthwhile noting that Benchmark Materials is forecasting that needle coke markets, which is the raw materials used to make synthetic graphite, are moving into a deficit by 2023. Needle coke, obviously not the one stuff that people use recreationally. I buy product from making gasoline and diesel. The two main use cases for needle coke is either synthetic graphite for lithium ion batteries or as a fuel for electric arc furnace steel making. You see, not only battery manufacturers have to fight steel makers for needle coke. In January 2020, International Maritime Organization is requiring ships to lower their emissions which means that in the short to medium term, the transport costs of those commodities can only go up. On top of that, because International Maritime Organization is requiring ships to lower their emissions to use lower sulfur fuels, that fuel is also used in producing needle coke, which means that the needle coke producers will also have to fight ship operators for that fuel. This headwind of potentially higher transportation costs and higher low sulfur crude oil costs and not to mention increasing competition with the steel manufacturers for needle coke. These are all major contributing factors why needle coke is heading towards a deficit territory. And this constraint in needle coke supply is likely going to increase the cost of producing synthetic graphite, which will ultimately reduce the margins for synthetic graphite battery material companies. Now, before I do a portfolio update, if you want access to my video scripts, my research, and also be part of my fortnightly Q&A, not to mention some additional content pieces, consider supporting this channel via Patreon. Now, I'll leave a link in the description box below for anyone who's interested, but nevertheless, it already means the world that you're watching this video. So thank you very much, and let's jump into a portfolio update. For my CMC market portfolio side of things, it's currently worth about 60,240 bucks at the moment. 
And I've decided to hold on to the $2,500 that I mentioned in my previous episode and invest it together with the savings from my second paycheck that I'm going to receive very soon. So I'll keep you posted on what I decide to do with my October capital in the next episode. A few of you have also asked how I'm investing 5,000 to 6,000 a month and what I do for a living. So I'll be making a video to talk about my active and passive income streams in the near future. Just bear with me, I still have a few more videos to get through. On the 12th of October, 2020, when research announced that they're paying a fully frank dividend of 4.9 cents per share. Now I have dividend reinvestment planned on for this position. So it's likely I'm going to reinvest all of that dividends, usually at a discount in to the same position, so into WAM Research. If we just zoom out and look at the 2020 calendar year, WAM Research is up approximately 5.69%. And you can argue that because they have a 1% management fee, the total returns is less than that. But hey, it's still better than VAS and I'm happy that I am preserving and growing my wealth instead of losing money, if you will. If we zoom out even more, since I purchased WAM Research in 2018, it's still better than VAS. Now it's easy for me to retrospectively say that because it could easily be the other way around in the future for WAM research. But my thinking process behind this LIC is for more mid cap exposure. I didn't go for VAS in the beginning just because of how heavy the bank exposure within VAS is. Other than that, the federal budget 2020 has certainly helped with market sentiment and ASX 300 have gone up approximately by 5% since then. With my US portfolio, it's currently worth 15,800 plus 800 bucks. So it's approximately 16,600 US dollars, which is approximately 22,700 Australian dollars. I haven't made any changes with my US portfolio, but I am working through a consolidation plan so that I have less stocks and I can provide a better coverage. Tesla is releasing their third quarter results very soon. So I'll be talking about that when it's released. At the same time, quarterly earnings is always an opportunity for me to build my position in Tesla because people love to ride the trend up to the point of quarterly earnings and then take profits after quarterly earnings. So I'll keep you posted on what I do decide to do in this portfolio as well. The one last thing I will say is that Dropbox and GoPro are not part of my portfolio. They are free stocks that's given to me if you do decide to try stake for yourself. Now I'm not sponsored by stake, but I personally just use stake because it's a lot easier to use and a lot more affordable to invest in US stocks over here compared to some of the other platforms. So on that note, if you wouldn't mind a GoPro Dropbox or Nike when you try stake for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you have learned something new, consider gently smashing that like button right there. Subscribe to my channel and click onto the bell so that when I release future videos, you be the first one to know. Now, before you go, I have left a video on the screen that I think you'll really like. So consider watching that as your next video. As usual, Otto will always do the honors and see you very, very soon.